Hi everyone, my name is Alvaro Martinez Sanchez, and in this video, I will be presenting our work in causality analysis of large scale structures in the flow around a wall mounted square cylinder. This project is part of a very nice collaboration between KTH Royal Institute of Technology, the Polytechnic University of Madrid, the Illinois Institute of Technology, and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I would like to acknowledge Esteban López, Soledad Leclanch, Adrián Lozano Durán, and Kites Ribastava and Ricardo Vinuesa for all their contributions to this project. The work is already published in archive. You can find the link here, but it will also be available in the description. There, you can find more details about the employee methodology and a more detailed discussion on the obtained results. So starting with the motivation of this project, with the rise of population in urban areas, Understanding how pollutants remain trapped within cities is of increasing importance. Air pollution has been recently reported as the largest environmental health risk in Europe and a major cause of premature deaths and disease. In particular, some recent studies have documented that at least 800,000 premature deaths per year are attributed to pollution in Europe. Therefore, our objective is to gain further understanding of the physics of the flow around these environments to obtain new physical models that can be employed in the future for the prediction of pollutant dispersion within cities. To do this, in this project, we employ some reviews of their models of the flow around a single wall mounted obstacle, which represents a very simplified urban environment. Based on this reviews of their model, we employ causality matrix to further examine the interactions between the underlying mechanisms defining the flow. This particular interesting in a novel in the context of urban flows and understanding these causal interactions between uh, the modes allows for the development of flow control strategies in the future. So before going into the details of the urban flow results, we present right now an example of how these results will look like. In this case, these results are obtained from the work of Bakala and Samishima and the work of Lima and others. On the right, you can see the causality map with which we can extract the most relevant interactions between different types of modes. In this case, we can see how the first mode is the most causal mode uh, over modes two, three, and four, which means that mode one is the cause of modes two, three, and four, or that modes two, three, and four are the effect of mode one. We can also see a cause and effect interaction between modes four and five, and we can see all of these interactions in the diagram on the left. Now we will explain the methodology employed for obtaining these causal interactions. We use the framework, the framework provided by information theory to quantify causality among different temporal signals. The central quantity for causal assessment of the signals is the Shannon entropy, which is expressed as a function of the probability density function of a given random discrete variable, in this case, x. This quantity can then be thought as a measure of the amount of uncertainty present in this variable. Then we can use the principle of conditional transfer entropy to estimate the amount of uncertainty on a different variable y, remaining after, after having observed the variable x. In this case, we define causality from X to Y as the decrease in uncertainty of Y, knowing the past state of X. Furthermore, due to the discrete nature of the signals that we will be using in our study, the computation of these quantities is performed through estimations of the PDF of each signal and their corresponding entropy values using the nearest neighbor entropy estimator introduced by Kraskov and others. You can find more details about this estimator in the work of Kraskov and others, but basically the, this estimator allows for the estimation of the entropy of a given variable when the number of samples is finite. And it relies on the principle of calculating distances between the different neighbors of a given sample. Before applying the previous methods to our urban database, we validated them by identifying the causal interactions in a low dimensional model of the near wall cycle of turbulence developed by Moelis and others in 2004. They develop a reduced order model consisting of nine modes, representing the base flow, the longitudinal streaks, the downstream vortex, the span wise flow, the normal vortex modes, 
the three-dimensional mode, and in particular, they introduce a new mode accounting for the modification of the base flow or as a result of the turbulent topology of the flow. We apply the previous causality matrix of the temporal signals associated to each of the previous modes, and we obtain very similar results to those reported by Lozano Duran and others in a turbulent channel flow. Therefore, these findings suggest that using this entropy to quantify transfer entropy, we can extract the most relevant causal interactions between modes of a highly nonlinear system. Also note that you can find more details about predictions with deep learning of temporal dependencies in this low dimensional model in the work of Rini Vassan and others. Then we move uh, towards the application of this matrix to the flow around a wall mounted obstacle. In terms of the numerical simulations, we employ data obtained from a direct numerical simulation using the numerical code NEC5000. We, you can find more details about this particular simulation in our paper in archive, but also you can find details about the flow statistics in a similar case in, a, in the work of Adsori and others. For this study, we consider 10,000 three-dimensional instantaneous fields to perform the model decompositions, which yields a database spanning a total of 50 time units. You can also see some of the characteristics of the three-dimensional flow around the finite cylinder in the instantaneous fields, but in the instantaneous vertical structures of the uh, figure on the right. Here, we notice a horseshoe vortex standing around the two sides of the obstacles and into the wake. This vortex affects many of the flow structures around the cylinder, including, for instance, the vortex shedding mode, the shear layer dynamics, and the width of the wake. And as a result, this vortex also has an impact on the near wave region and on the other vortex form on the leeward side of the obstacle. You can also see there the range of scales characteristics of turbulent flow, where the vertical structures within the wave show a wide range of sizes and energy contents. Now we will explain the methodology that has been followed for the creation of the reduced order model. To do this, we employ proper orthogonal decomposition to the previous set of data in order to decompose this given set of spatiotemporal data into an expansion of modes. So the first step is to collect all the data of our system, which in our case consists of three-dimensional fields of the stream one velocity of diff at different time instants. Then we organize this data in matrices such that every information of the system at every time step is stuck in the columns of a given matrix which in this case we denote as VK. This means that since we are dealing with three-dimensional fields, the dimension of the columns of VK corresponds to all the information of our system in a given time instant. And this dimension is usually very large when compared to the number of total snapshots that we uh, can employ, in our case, 10,000. Then once we have all our information in matrix form, we first apply dimensional reduction using singular value decomposition with the aim of obtaining a rank of the most energetic modes. The SVD method decomposes the input matrix, which we recall has a spatial dimension J that is usually much larger than temporal dimension K into some spatial modes, some singular values, and some time coefficients associated to each of the previous modes. Since we are dealing with the velocity fields, these singular values are optimally representing the flow field in terms of orthogonal modes run by their kinetic energy contributions to the system. And this is very useful since we can have a classification of the most energetic modes of the system. If we introduce the concept of tolerances, the method is now called uh, truncated SVD and allows for retaining only those PD modes whose energy contributions to the system are above a certain tolerance. In this case, N represents the spatial complexity and represents the number of modes uh, that we are retaining in our study. You can see here the energy distribution of our modes after applying POD to our data. In our case, we created a reduced order model composed by 10 modes that recover 30% of the total energy of the flow, which has been found in the literature to be enough to characterize the largest scale motion driving the main dynamics in this type of flow. Using this model, we based on the classification of our previous video, 
to differentiate between vortex generator modes and vortex breaker modes. You can see the three-dimensional structures associated to these modes in these figures. And we can basically say that the major structures and vortices are produced by the vortex generator modes, and therefore they are related to the mechanism that could create the horseshoe and our vortices. And on the other hand, the major flow structures could be then broken by the vortex breaker modes, which are also responsible for the dynamics of the turbulent wave. These last type of modes are generally associated to the most energetic modes of the system. In our case, the first two modes present characteristics of vortex breaker modes with some high velocity fluctuations on the wake, which relates to the vortex shedding phenomenon present in the flow past black bodies. In the case of the vortex generator mode, we can see a large scale streamline structure just after the obstacle, which surrounds and interacts with the R vortex by restricting its expansion. We show here the contours of uh, the 10 modes of our model, together with the frequency spectrum associated to the time coefficient of each of the modes. And based on these two, we can classify the modes between vortex generator and vortex breaker modes. The first two modes are vortex breaker modes with the same spatial structure and the same associated frequency values, which is representative of a flow structure that travels as a wave. Then we can classify modes three and four as vortex generator modes, since their associated peak frequencies appear in the low frequency region of the domain. Modes five to eight are also present in this low frequency range of the spectrum. However, the flow future start to exhibit fluctuating futures in the wake, and then these modes might be regarded as vortex generator modes that are harmonic of the previous G modes with dominant frequencies 0 0.05, 0 0.15, and 0 0.2. However, all these modes are the results of nonlinear interactions, and therefore they can be regarded as hybrid modes, which is the case of modes 9 and 10, whose interaction with each other mode is expected to be extracted from the causality analysis. Again, we refer to the work of Latvita and others, and to our previous video, to provide more insight into this classification and the characteristics of each of the modes. Finally, we apply the methodology for causality matrix to the temporal coefficients of each of the previous modes, and we obtain the following causal maps. On the left, we can see the causal map uh, for the entire set of modes. This mode shows a very high, high causal inference between the first two modes compared to the rest of the relationships. The fact that these two modes are representative of the same flow mechanism, but with a slight shift in phase, makes their causal relationship evident. In fact, since these modes represent the same flow mechanism and their associated temporal evolution is equivalent, but with a 90 degrees phase shift, this result means that this mechanism propagates as a traveling wave, wave in a periodic fashion. On the right, we can see the same causal map when the breaker modes causal relationships are set to zero. To evaluate the cause and effect interactions between the rest of the modes. Here, we observe high causal connections for modes one and two on the hybrid mode 10, and vortex breaker modes can then be regarded as the most influential mechanism in hybrid modes. However, vortex break uh, generator modes, modes uh, from, six, from three to six, do not have a direct causal inference over the rest of the modes. Even though it could have been hypothesized a priori, the D modes should occur before B modes. We show now a diagram depicting the main mutual interactions among the various modes due to the past states of the other modes. We can essentially conclude that vortex breaker modes, apart from being the most energetic modes of the system, are the most causal modes on hybrid modes. And then these hybrid modes are also causal on some vortex generator modes. So to conclude, we created a reduce order model consisting of 10 modes, applying POD to data from the turbulent flow around a single wall-mounted cylinder, and we have classified them into vortex generator modes and vortex breaker modes. We employed the nearest neighbor entropy estimator to calculate the conditional transfer entropy between the temporal evolution of each of the previous, 
and we have validated the tool by applying it to data from a turbulent channel flow. We have concluded that vortex breaker modes are the most causal modes on hybrid modes, and no significant uh, causal relations were found for vortex generator modes. Here, you can find our contact details, and we will be very happy to discuss any questions you may have about this project. You will have every link available in the description, and we also refer you to our previous video in Urban Flows to properly understand the main results that we discuss here. Thank you very much.